Hi, everybody. Uh, this is uh, session six of our uh, under our class, Life School, Forerunner School class, uh, Understanding the Forerunner Call. Uh, and it's uh, session six is entitled A Voice for the Lord. Uh, so we want to, that's what we want to talk about in this, uh, in this session. But uh, first, I just want to welcome you and thank you for being a part of the Forerunner School. It's uh, really surpassed all of our expectations in terms of the number of people involved and the, just the enthusiasm that we're, we're uh, encountering with it. So we're really excited about it, and I really do believe it's a very timely uh, word for the church, uh, certainly in America, and uh, really, I really, really believe throughout the world. For as darkness arises, God wants the glory to rise upon his church, and forerunners are, are crucial in that role. Forerunners bring that uh, message and awaken the church and uh, transform the church and do a lot of things or a voice into that uh, work that God is doing. So we're really uh, excited about this uh, school and uh, excited about this session too. Just I want to just do a little bit of a review and then a little bit of looking forward before we get into this session. Just in terms of review, this is session six. So if you'll remember in session one, we just talked about the days of Elijah and how they compare to the days in which we're living now. And just as God called, raised up Elijah uh, in the days uh, of, of old, he is raising up forerunners anointed with the spirit and the power of Elijah in this day to be that voice into the church and into even beyond that, but certainly into the church. So that was session one. Then session two, the, the point of session two was to demonstrate that we're talking about end time forerunners. God has always had forerunners. He's, he's had them even going back to the days of Noah and maybe even before that, he's had forerunners. Uh, but what we're talking about is a specific call upon forerunners for the end times. We believe that we are living in the end times. Now, as we talked about in that session, we're not just talking about the last three and a half years or the last seven years. We're talking about a prolonged length of time but leading up to the second coming of Christ, whenever that might be, we have no, uh, we're not date setters. We're not people who are trying to say it's going to happen at this point in time or that point in time. But we know that God has and is raising up forerunners uh, as messengers, master builders, and, and friends of the bridegroom to prepare the church and to speak into uh, the global situation. Uh, in preparation for the second coming of Christ. So that was session two to demonstrate that. Then session three uh, and four and five, we dealt with a detailed look at Luke chapter one, verse 16 and 17. That's our foundational verse, or two verses really, the foundational passage uh, that sets the groundwork for the forerunner call. Speaking of John the Baptist and that he was a, forerunner called to turn people back to the Lord their God so as to make ready a people uh, for Christ uh, anointed in the spirit and the power of Elijah. So we looked in session three at the idea of uh, turning people back to Christ. We looked in session four about the idea of making ready a people prepared for the Lord. Uh, and then in session five, we looked at the anointing of the spirit and the power of Elijah. So up until this point, what we've been doing is we have been a, establishing a groundwork, a, a foundation uh, of the forerunner call. We've defined it. We've kind of clarified what some of the terms mean in our foundational verse. We've talked about it being an end time call and we've talked about the need in the, in the context of what's happening in the earth today. So we've kind of laid a foundation. Now, with, beginning with this session, session six, we're going to shift a little bit over the next uh, five sessions where we're going to look at different functions of the forerunner call, different aspects of how forerunners will function. Uh, and so in this session, we'll look at forerunners that they are a voice. Uh, above all else, that's who we are. We're a voice, and we'll talk about the details of that in just a minute. Uh, session uh, seven deals with forerunners as end time messengers. And I won't share anything about that now, but we'll get into it in the next session. 
Session eight, we'll look at forerunners as end time master builders, wise master builders. Session nine, we'll look at forerunners as uh, intercessors and spiritual warriors. Uh, and in session 10, we'll look at uh, for, the idea of forerunners as friends of the bridegroom to call to prepare a bride uh, for Christ. And then 11 and 12, we'll begin to look at different traits of the actual forerunners themselves. So that's kind of where we're headed with this class. There are 12 sessions in all. We're on session six right now. So we want to talk now about being a voice. Uh, and as we do, or as we, to pray, prepare for it, I want to just have a prayer, a brief prayer, uh, to invite the Holy Spirit to take control. Uh, and then we'll dig right in to that uh, teaching. So Father, we thank you for those who will listen to this and watch it, and we just ask for the anointing of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord, I, and as we're talking about a voice, I ask for you to confirm your word as you allow me to be a voice uh, for the you, Lord, uh, and, and essentially just a vessel, an earthen vessel, that the, that the majesty, the treasure of Christ might speak through this to prepare us all to be a voice. So we ask for the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, let's begin by looking uh, at how Elijah and then we'll look at John the Baptist and how they were really above all else, they were a voice. Um, let's look at some scriptures in 1 Kings, uh, starting with 17, verse 1. Uh, now Elijah, you know, we've talked about that some, who was of the settlers of Gilead, said to Ahab, as the Lord, the God of Israel lives before whom I stand, surely there shall be neither dew nor rain these years, and now listen to this, except by my word, except by my word. So you begin to see very first verse that we talk about Elijah, uh, we hear that he is a voice, except his voice, by his voice uh, coming uh, into uh, the, the, uh, the, the life of Ahab. Uh, we see it also in 1 Kings 18, verse 21. And Elijah came near to all the people and said, again, we see his voice, he's speaking, how long will you hesitate between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him, but if Baal, follow him. Now, the people didn't obey uh, his word there uh, this time, but he was a voice. He was a voice. He said he was a voice. Um, let's look also at 1 Kings 18, 36 through 38. These are these verses, these scriptures are in your notes. You can look at those at a later time. Uh, then it came about at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, again, his voice, O Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, today let it be known that thou art, God in, thou, thou, art, thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. And he says, Answer me, O Lord, answer me, that the people may know that thou, O Lord, art God, and that thou have turned their heart back again. Again, we just see this time he's speaking in prayer to the Lord, but it's his voice that's, that's bringing about transformation uh, and change. And one more scripture verse. Uh, we, we, too much to read all of this, but 1 Kings chapter 21, uh, verse 17. We'll start with verse 17. This is about Naboth's vineyard. Uh, then the word of the Lord came to Elijah saying, Arise and go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, who is in Samaria. Behold, he's in the vineyard of Naboth where he was gone down to take possession of it and you shall speak to him. In other words, you, your voice uh, will, will, in this case, bring judgment upon Ahab and upon his, Ahab, the house of Ahab and upon Jezebel. And so what we see is that uh, it was his voice that God used. Now, now Elijah did miracles. I mean, he, he, did, <coughs> he did some powerful miracles, things that we would, uh, we would love to be used of God to accomplish. So he did miracles, uh, and Elisha even more miracles than he, but it's, the miracles were not what brought the transformation into the land, into the corporate group of people. It wasn't that as important as they were to the very, in, very the individuals to whom he ministered to, it was his voice that brought transformation in the Northern Kingdom. 
It was his words, it was his voice uh, that did that. Now, in the same with John the Baptist. You know, of course, it says of John the Baptist that he didn't do any miracles, but yet he was used mightily and powerfully uh, of, the, of the Lord. So let's look at uh, John the Baptist. I'm just going to read from the notes here because these, are, these scriptures are printed out in your notes. Uh, but Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, speaking about John the Baptist, uh, said, Now in those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh, for this is the one referred to by Isaiah the prophet when he said, now listen to this, when, when Isaiah the prophet said, the voice, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make ready the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And so, again, you see the voice, John the Baptist being a voice uh, then if you look at Isaiah 40, which this quote, Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, is a pull quote from Isaiah chapter 40. Um, and read a little bit of that uh, I, from Isaiah 40, I think starting with verse 3. A voice is calling, prepare the way of the Lord in the wilderness. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. Let the rough ground become a plain and the rugged terrain a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all flesh will see it uh, together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, call out. Uh, so he, he was saying to John the Baptist, be a voice, be a voice, call out. And what shall I call out? And the Lord said, all flesh is grass and all uh, and all its lo loveliness is like the flower uh, of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades uh, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass, the gra grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God, the word, the word of our God stands forever. And then here's what the Lord told John the Baptist. Get up on a high mountain, O Zion, bearer of good news. Lift up your voice mightily O Jerusalem, bearer of good news, lift it up, do not fear, say to the cities of Judah, here is your God, here is your God. Behold, the Lord God will come with might, his arm ruling with him, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he will tend his flock in his arm, he will gather the lambs and carry them in his bosom, he will gently lead the nursing ewes. Uh, so what do you see? You see, just like Elijah, his voice was spoken into the, corp the people of God and into the nation to bring the transformation, to turn them back to God. And, and Isaiah is prophesying about John the Baptist, and he's saying the very same thing. It's your voice. Say to the, say to the cities uh, uh, of Israel, say to Jerusalem, say to the people of God uh, to turn back to him. And of course, John the Baptist did that. Uh, with when he said, repent for the kingdom of God uh, is at hand. And so we see that Elijah, above all else, was a voice. John the Baptist was a voice. Uh, and in the same way, end time forerunners, whether they'll function as messengers or whether they function as master builders, whether they function as intercessors, whether they function as friends of the bridegroom, in whatever role they are, they are involved in, Above all else, we are to be a voice. Um, you know, I just think a little bit about my own uh, journey with the, with the Lord in ministry. You know, I, I'm you know, coming pretty close to 30, over 35 years now and you know, make pretty, heading towards 40 years in full-time ministry. So I've been doing this a long time. And I know in the early days, especially after we started the church and I was... Uh, pursuing some of the charismatic manifestations. Uh, you know, what I really longed for was the power. I wanted the power of God. I wanted, uh, you know, I wanted to lay hands on people and have them fall over, you know, and uh, that, that I thought, man, that would be really great to, to pray, put, lay hands on somebody and let them fall over. And so, you know, sometimes I maybe got a little bit too aggressive and pushed a little bit or whatever uh, and did some of that. Uh, you know, I wanted to, to pray for people, lay hands and let them be healed and 
uh, and delivered and all of that. And, and I still enjoy that. I still enjoy uh, praying for the sick and seeing God move there. I still enjoy casting out demons and, and all of those things are, are rewarding. But I've come over the years, I've come to the re realization that all of that, I mean, it, you know, if you pray for somebody who's sick and they're here, healed miraculously, obviously their life is changed. But it doesn't touch uh, the, a larger group, maybe their family or their uh, you know, uh, spouse or whatever. It, it does that for sure. So it's good. It's a good thing. But it doesn't touch the wider body of Christ. Uh, so a lot of these signs and wonders, they're good. I, I, I don't want to minimize those in any way. We long for it, and I long for even more of those to happen. But forerunners, and we even talked about this in the last session, that John the Baptist didn't perform any miracles. And, you know, and if, as a forerunner, you may not either. Some may and some may not. Uh, but the point for this session is that it is our voice, uh, our voice that brings change, our voice that impacts the church. And what God wants us to do is to really he, wants to, he really wants that truth to be embedded in our hearts so that we're not doing this for our own uh, exaltation or for, uh, you know, to be used in a, a power ministry, the, the, the traditional type of power ministry of healing and deliverance and personal prophecy and those types of things. Those may come or they may not, but it's the voice of, of the Lord speaking through you, speaking through me, uh, we being an earthen vessel, but the voice of the Lord coming through us uh, that makes uh, the impact uh, upon people. Forerunners above all else are a voice. So let's look at, uh, I love this Psalm uh, 29, talks about the voice of the Lord, and talks about the voice of the Lord being powerful Starting with verse 3, just read a couple of scriptures of it. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. Listen to this now. Verse 4. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yes, the Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. And he makes Lebanon to skip like a calf. Uh, and we could go on. Uh, well, verse 7. The, the voice of the Lord hews out flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. Uh, the voice of the Lord makes the deer to calve. Uh, so he talks about the power in the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord spoken through earthen vessels in obedience to him makes huge impact. It makes a huge impact upon the people of God. And more than anything else, that's who we are. We are, a, we are to be a people who are a voice uh, to the Lord. The voice of the Lord through us invites people into a new expression of Christianity. The voice of the Lord uh, brings transformation. The voice of the Lord is what breaks down demonic strongholds. The, the voice of the Lord uh, is, is what... Uh, Wait, what breaks open hardened hearts. It is the voice of the Lord uh, that forerunners must uh, utilize. Above all else, we're a voice for the Lord. Uh, so I'm, I've kind of pounded that in the ground, but I hope you get the, the point there. I really want us to see that, that as forerunners, uh, you know, we may do ministry in terms of uh, laying hands on the sick and doing things like that, uh, that may or may not be a part of our ministry. But the call is to be a voice, be a voice, a voice into the church, a voice into the culture, a voice to a God related about those things, a voice uh, even into governmental systems. But we are to be a voice uh, above all else. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, let's... Let's look now, I think, at eight um, different, uh, yeah, eight aspects of the voice of the forerunner. We want to look at some of the, the details of that. Uh, first one, 
uh, forerunners are to be a voice on behalf of the man Christ Jesus, or to be a voice on behalf of the man uh, Christ Jesus. Uh, we see this in uh, several places, but in John chapter 1, the Gospel of John chapter 1, verse 29, uh, the next day John the Baptist saw Jesus coming to him, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is he, he was telling, talking to this of the people, this is he on behalf of whom I said, after me comes a man who is a higher rank than I, for he existed before me. Then it goes on and it talks uh, about uh, more things. But we see that John's entire ministry was on behalf of this man, Christ Jesus. And so uh, that's who we're to be. We see it also in the life of Elijah. There's some several scriptures in your notes. Uh, I'll read from the notes here uh, that Elijah was a voice on behalf of the Lord. Uh, uh, this is 1 Kings 18, 21. Elijah came near to all the people and said, how long will you hesitate between two opinions? If the Lord is God, Yahweh, if Yahweh is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. In other words, he is a voice on behalf of this man, Christ Jesus. Uh, another verse, uh, 1 Kings 18, verse 36 and 37, he came near to the people uh, this time as well, uh, and uh, I, I won't read all of it, uh, but he said, Answer me, O Lord, answer me, that the people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their heart back to him again. In other words, he's talking, he's speaking on behalf of the Lord, on behalf of the Lord. When all the people saw it, this is uh, 1839, when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Um, and so there's a lot of things that we can be a voice for. A lot, even in the Christian realm, there are a lot of things that we can be a voice on behalf of. Um, you know, we can, we can speak as a voice on behalf of God's blessings. We can speak on behalf of prosperity. We can speak uh, on behalf of uh, national issues, our national issues. Our, we can speak on behalf of cultural issues. We can speak into a lot of things uh, as a forerunner even. Uh, we can speak into a lot of issues as a, as a man or woman of God, as a minister, as a preacher or a teacher, uh, as uh, one who even in the congregation who's, who's God is using to uh, build up or to help somebody else. There's a lot of issues there. But the primary uh, person for whom we are a voice or to be a voice is this man, Christ Jesus, to turn people to him, to him, whether it's in repentance, whether it's correcting an issue uh, that needs to be corrected, whether it's exhorting them to go on, whatever it may be, we're on behalf of this man, Christ. That's, that's who we, we are agents ministers of reconciliation for the man, Christ Jesus, and no other, no other one. Uh, we are, and so we are turning people and we're speaking on behalf of this man, Christ Jesus. Amen? So that's the first point and probably the foremost point, that as forerunners, we have been sent by the man, Christ. We have been called by the man, Christ, and we, are to, and we are to be his representative to bring people to him and on his behalf uh, to turn people to him. Uh, so that's the first point is we, if we're going to be a voice, we have to be a voice for this man, Christ Jesus. The second of these eight principles is that we are also, uh, forerunners are to be a voice from the throne. Forerunners are to be a voice from the throne. Um, let's read some other scriptures. Elijah and John the Baptist, they were a voice, but they were speaking what God told them uh, to speak. Uh, let's just look at some of the scriptures. Again, they're in your notes, and so just to save time, I won't turn to them. I'll just read from the notes. But uh, verse, 1 Kings 17, uh, verse uh, 2 and 3. Uh, the word of the Lord came to him, 
to Elijah, go away from here and turn eastward and hide yourself by the brook Cherith. Uh, verse, 1 Kings 17, 89. The word of the Lord came to him, arise and go to Zarephath. 17, 16. The bowl of flour was not exhausted, nor did the jar of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord. Uh, 1724. Then the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is in your mouth. Is in, in your mouth is truth. First uh, Kings 18.1. Now it happened after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying, go show yourself to Ahab. First uh, Kings 21, 17 and 18. Now the word of the Lord came to Elijah saying, and then a little bit later, you shall speak to him saying, thus says the Lord. Uh, and that's First Kings 21, 17 and 18. 1 Kings 21, 28. The word of the Lord came to Elijah. Uh, so as you can see, this is how, this is how Elijah ministered. He ministered by, on behalf of God, and, you know, we, and we minister on behalf of Christ. But we minister uh, as agents of the word from the throne. It's not our own words. It's what God is saying. We're just vessels. We're, we're just a a conduit uh, for the voice of the Lord to be spoken into a group of people. Uh, and so we must be a voice uh, from the throne. Um, we see it with John the Baptist also uh, from 1 John 29 through 34. He, this is where he said, uh, you know, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world and then a little bit later, it says, I did not recognize him, but he who sent me to baptize in water said to me, he said to me, he upon you, whom you see the spirit descending and remaining upon him, this is the one who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. I myself have, myself have seen and testified that this is the son of God. So the Lord said uh, to him, uh, the one where you see the dove descending, this is going to be the Messiah. This is Christ, the Christ. And so he was speaking, but he was speaking what the Lord had told him to say. And so forerunners, one, we must be a, a, a voice on behalf of this man. And second, we must, be a, we must be a voice from the throne, a voice speaking from the throne. That's the way the Lord does it. He, he, he has a plan. He has a purpose. He has direction. He has building blocks. He has all these things that he wants to initiate into the earth, but he uses people. He uses people to speak. Uh, often he does that. He, he may speak to us directly, but a lot of times he uses others to speak. And he does it where those forerunners are a voice uh, from the throne. Now, I want to give a little bit of a caution here, though. You, you know, I don't want you to get so tied up with this that you don't feel like I can't say a word unless I had a dream last night or I had a vision this morning or some sort of encounter or heard God specifically for this point. You know, he may say something to you or, or he may just quicken in your heart that it's a time, you know, it's a, it's a, perfect, it's a time and season for a particular issue, and you may speak into that issue for weeks or for months, and you don't have to hear every time uh, God say the same thing over and over again. He's spoken, and then we, we can speak it. And so I don't want you to get so tied up that you can't open your mouth, but to understand that we're not to be, there are many voices, and we're not to be a voice from other places other than what the Lord is saying. We're to be vessels. Uh, of his uh, word for, for, from the throne. The next one of these uh, aspects of the voice of the Lord is that we are to be a voice and not an echo. We're to be a voice and not an echo. Really, really important. You know, you're in the forerunner school. Most of you who are listening and watching this, you're in the forerunner school. And so Brian and I are the primary teachers of the forerunner school. You know, we're writing notes and we're teaching and all of that, but we don't want you to be an echo of us. 
We want you to learn from this. We believe that God has given us some insight and revelation into it, and it's important information, and it's, but we don't want you to just be able to just repeat it. Uh, I mean, I hope you'll learn it and study it and, and get these principles in your heart because I think they'll be helpful, but I don't want you to be an echo of me, and Brian doesn't want you to be an echo of him. We want you to be your own voice from the throne on behalf of the man Christ, not on behalf of us. You know, over the years, uh, like I've shared in other sessions, uh, we started this journey on the forerunner, of the Forerunner Call in about 1996. So it's been quite a while now since we began it. And over that time period, we've had two <clears throat> primary mentors or spiritual mentors over that time. First one was our friend from Australia, Noel Mann. And he ministered into our lives and in our church for about 20 years. And he's now since gone on to be with, with the Lord. Uh, but we learned a lot from no man. We learned a lot. We learned about the whole issue of the bride. We learned about the man child. We learned that we were to be a house of prayer for the nations. And so on and on, we learned so much from him. And then uh, as he was unable to uh, to come anymore and to minister into our lives. Uh, the Lord put us in connection with Terry Bennett, another uh, spiritual mentor. And we've learned so much from his ministry. We've learned things like the internal kingdom. We've learned things about like eternal purpose. We've learned so many things uh, from his ministry uh, as well. And so I honor both of those men. I am so thankful. I, I it frightens me to think where I would be if it had not been for both of those men who've, who've ministered into my life, who've ministered into Brian's life, who's ministered into our church in such powerful, powerful ways. They've been, very, they've been crucial, crucial. Um, but the Lord has spoken to me really clearly and says, as much as those men have ministered into your life, you're not to be an echo. Ken, you're not to be an echo of either one or of those men. You are to be your own man uh, hearing my voice and speaking what I say to speak. That we learn from them, we honor them, we glean so much information from them, but God wants us to be a unique creation, a unique voice. And he wants you to be that uh, as it relates to Brian and I. You know, whether you're a part of a denomination or you have a bishop or some sort of movement that you've grown up in, uh, he doesn't want you to be an echo of what the leaders of that movement are saying. He wants you uh, to be your own, uh, your own man your, or your own woman. He, that is his desire, uh, not to be an echo but to be a voice. And the same would be true, I said it earlier, but I'll say it again. You're not to be an echo of what we teach at the Forerunner School. Learn from it. We believe it's valuable information that we've gleaned over the years following those mentors that, uh, and following the Holy Spirit as well that God has put into our life. But we want you to be not an echo, but a voice. Um, the fourth thing, the next one, is that forerunners must be a voice of truth. Forerunners must be a voice of truth. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, pursuits. There are a lot of pursuits that people can pursue, even in the Christian realm, Christian faith. Uh, but, it's, but it's Christ and truth uh, and truth is not just a set of facts, it's a person, the person uh, of Christ. Uh, you know, the message to the church at Pergamum, uh, let me turn here for a minute. Uh, revelation here. Uh, this is a powerful message. Uh, you know, Jesus said to the angel to the church in Pergamum write, the one who has the sharp two-edged sword says this. That's his mouth. Truth, because it says in 
uh, Revelation chapter 1 that the sword, two-edged sword, comes out of the mouth of Christ. This is a word. So this is his voice. It's like a sharp two-edged sword. And here's what he says. I know where, where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and you're, you hold fast my name and did not deny my faith, even in the days of Antipas, my witness, my faithful one, who was killed among you where Satan dwells. Um, so he wants us to be that faithful witness, not to deny his faith, to bring truth, the sword of truth into the situation. There was compromise. There was uh, all sorts of things. I don't want to take the time to try to just go through this entire message to this church, but there was a lot of issues going on there, and there was pressure upon the people to compromise. They were compromising, and Antipas uh, was a voice of truth uh, into that uh, area where there might be compromise, into, the, into that uh, group of people. He was a voice uh, of truth, and God wants us to be that. As a voice, we have to be a we have to drop a plumb line of truth into situations at times, into the lives of people, into congregations, into those whoever we are allowed to to speak into. We need to be those people who will who will speak truth into the situation. Right now, there's a lot of error in the church, uh, and in Brian's class that he's uh, teaching that'll be part of the Forerunner School of Understanding the End Times, uh, we'll highlight some of the eschatological issues that are problems in the church uh, today. But there's a lot of issues that are, that are that in the church that are, that are leading people astray uh, from truth. And forerunners are to, are to bring truth into the situation, to bring them back to the person of Christ who is truth and the truth of his word that flows from this person of Christ. Uh, in addition to that, there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure coming in the, in the future, uh, even here now, but it is coming more and more and more. Uh, a lot of pressure uh, is coming uh, upon people. Uh, and so... What, uh, what the Lord wants us to do is to be a people who are bringing truth to prepare people for what is coming with the pressure uh, in the world. As, as we approach the second coming of Christ, as we approach the second coming of Christ, what we're going to find is that Christianity is more and more and more set apart or ostracized from the mainline culture of the world. And what does the Lord want us to do? What the Lord wants, the, what, the, what, the, what the Lord wants is he wants uh, us to bring, forerunners to bring truth into the situation so that those who are being pressured away from the truth of Christ to come back to this man, Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. So, we are to be messengers, voices of truth. Uh, the fifth thing is that uh, forerunners are to be a voice of transformation uh, in the church, a voice of transformation in the church. Uh, one of the things Elijah was, was he was one who brought transformation. Uh, Jesus said this about Elijah. Elijah is coming and will restore all things. So we'll, we talked about that in some earlier sessions about Elijah uh, did come and John the Baptist, but he's coming again. He will come in the end times before the day of the Lord, uh, and he will come and restore all things. Now, we see, we'll talk about this when we talk about master builders. We'll talk more about it. But when you see what Elijah did, before he confronted, before he called fire down from heaven to confront the prophets of Baal and the prophets of, uh, of Jezebel, of, uh, of the Asherah, before he did that, what did he do? He restored the altar. He restored the true altar. Uh, he got 12 stones and put it on there, uh, which is representative of the whole body of Christ. He Then he put wood on that, which is the cross. He dug a a, a ditch or a trench around it for water. Um, so what was he doing? He was restoring the altar, the true altar of Yahweh that had been torn down throughout the reign uh, uh, of Ahab and Jezebel 
where they had created this whole false altar. Uh, but what was he doing? He was bringing restoration. He was bringing transformation into the body of Christ so that fire could come down from heaven and turn the people back from Baal worship and from opposition, compromise, and passivity back to the true worship of God. And so uh, we must be a voice of, of transformation. God wants us not only to confront, not only to invite, not only to announce, but also to help people to transform their lives, their churches, into what they need to be to be made ready for uh, the end times, to be made ready for God's eternal purpose, and to be made ready for eternity. Uh, and so we, we have to be a voice of transformation or, or uh, uh, restoration. Now the sixth one, um, not too many more of these, the sixth one is the forerunners are to be a voice uh, calling for believers to embrace the cross. Uh, basically in the West right now we have a crossless uh, church. <coughs> we have a church in which much of the church has forsaken the cross. Now we, the church believes in the work that Jesus did on the cross, where salvation is through the cross, where healing is in the cross, where, where God's work for us on our behalf is in the cross. We believe that, but the cross life, where we must go to the cross, die to self, die to sin, in order for Christ to be formed in us, that message has been predominantly lost in much of the church. Uh, amazing percentage of the church, really. It, although, if you look at the epistles, it's, uh, it's the predominant, by far, the predominant theme of the New Testament church is that uh, Christ and him crucified and the cross life is a part of that. And so we must become uh, messengers of the cross. Uh, you know, you notice that uh, going back to Elijah and his rebuilding of the altar, when he rebuilt that altar, uh, what did he put on it? He put wood on it. And the wood was what the, the, the sacrificial animal was put on top of that wood, the wood being representative of the cross, of the cross. And so we have to bring restoration of the cross back into uh, the church. We'll voice to call believers to embrace the cross, the cross life. Uh, we could say a lot more about that, but we won't take the time uh, to do that. Uh, seventh, the seventh way, forerunners are to be a voice into the church and in relation to the culture uh, and the government uh, systems. Um, you know, we see several different dimensions of Elijah's voice. You know, at first, he was a, he was a voice uh, inviting the church. He was, a, he was a voice of restoration to the church. Well, uh, it was the people of God, but you know, taking it in type and shadow form, it, it, symbolic of the church. He was a voice into the church and he was a voice into the, uh, the restoration of the church. But then he was also a voice related to Ahab, who's a picture of governmental systems and uh, that type of thing, antichrist systems. Uh, he was a voice into the Jezebel, prophets of Jezebel, which is a picture of uh, the culture, the, the immoral, the deteriorating culture. And so forerunners are to be a voice into those three areas, predominantly and at least initially uh, into the church. We're, we're to be a voice into the church. That is our predominant role is to be that voice into the church. But then also we are to be a, a, a voice into the, into the Antichrist system, into the, into the immoral culture. One, to keep people out of that system, but also... Uh, to be obedient to the Lord in whatever he says, whether it's speaking into those things or whether it's praying to the Lord about those things. You know, Elijah did both, really, and we need to be obedient to the Lord, whatever he may say along those lines. And so that, that, that concept of the church, the 
uh, culture and the governmental systems, forerunners are to be a voice as led by the Holy Spirit into those three major categories. Uh, now, eight, this is the last one. Forerunners are, are a voice calling out from the wilderness. Forerunners are a voice calling out from the wilderness. And you familiar with this from Matthew chapter three. Uh, we're talking about John the Baptist, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make ready a people uh, prepared for the Lord, make ready to, their path straight. Uh, likewise, uh, Elijah came from outside the camp of, of normal religious activity to be a voice from, uh, into Israel. Uh, both were voices speaking into main, the mainstream, listen to this now, both were voices speaking into the mainstream of religious activity of their day from a place outside of the mainstream of religious expression. That's really, really important point. We'll talk about that a lot more in sessions 11 and 12. Uh, really, really important. Forerunners have to come outside the camp. Uh, you know, John the Baptist minute he went into the wilderness and people came out to him. Uh, Elijah made his declaration about the rain and then the Lord sent him in outside the, the mainstream of the religious activity, the brook Cherith and then the Zarephath and, and all of those things before he was able to come back and speak in to them. Uh, very, very important point. The Lord will call us as forerunners outside of the system. That doesn't mean, mean we need to, to move to the Sahara Desert or something. I mean, I'm not saying you have to move literally physically, but what you have to do is come, you have to come out of this mainstream of, of the system. You're not going to be able to speak into the system if you're a part of it. If you're intertwined in it, you're not going to be able to be a, a voice back into it. You may not necessarily have to leave a, a denomination. I, I don't know. You may or may not. The Lord will lead you as to what to do, but you can't be a part of it. You can't be entangled in it. You'll not be able to do it. You'll not be able to be a voice. And so that can be a very lonely thing at times because you're speaking rather than going the flow of the group, you're going the very opposite and you're, they're going downstream and you're, and you're going upstream. So it's a very difficult thing at some times, at times, but uh, very, it's very important and very real that forerunners uh, are a voice calling out from the wilderness into whatever the Lord might have you say, but to bring other people out of the erroneous kinds of things. And not, not every movement or every network is, is evil but there are, or in error, but there are a lot of them who are. And you, can't, you have to come out of those systems in order to into the wilderness to speak back into uh, the people. So uh, that's, the, that's the eight uh, things. Let's just close with Isaiah, go to Isaiah chapter six, very familiar. Scripture verse. Verse 8, Isaiah 6, verse 8. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And he said, Here I am, send me. And, and then verse 9, And the voice said, Go and tell this people, Keep on listening, but do not perceive. Keep on looking, but do not understand. Render the hearts of this people insensitive, their ears dull and their eyes dim, lest they see with their eyes with their, and with their ears and with their hearts and return to be healed. And then, then I said, how long, Lord? And he said, until the cities are devastated without inhabitants. Uh, and he goes on. And so uh, he's saying, Isaiah, I want you to be my voice. I want you to be my voice in what is happening in Israel, what's happening in the southern kingdom. I want you to be my voice. And he's saying the same thing to us. Will we be his voice? 
first into the church and then wherever it leads beyond that. Will we be that voice of the Lord? Maybe crying in the wilderness. Uh, maybe not making a lot of friends at times. But will we be a voice from the throne, a voice on behalf of this man Christ? I say yes to it. I will. I will. Whatever it means. And I believe everybody is in the forerunner school will say likewise, will say yes. So we close with that statement. We say yes, Lord. We say yes. Raise us up as a voice of the Lord from the throne to make ready a people prepared for you. Amen.